Welcome, welcome. I want to do a fun little session today on shears. We're seeing them everywhere right now for spring, for summer. They're so simply beautiful. And yet I, the feedback I get from many of you is that you're just a little bit nervous about them. So I'm going to just get you over that hump and just realize how much fun they can be. So we're going to start with this photo because this is what really inspired me. You can see it's polka dots. It's got a little twist in it. And you might look at that and look at what I have on and think that's a far stretch. But really what I realized was I love the twist. I love the, tw the softness of the polka dots and the twist. I like that stripe going in there. You know, for some reason it was kind of a yin yang type thing. Um, I realized I didn't want it to be all polka dots. I felt like that was, for me, maybe a little bit too many. So I had these coordinating shears that are together. They're both Carolina Constance, and I decided to mix them and kind of do a half and half. You know, ever since I did the pants, I'm kind of this half and half kind of girl. But anyway, I decided that I really wanted to mix these two. So there's a couple things I want to teach you about shears. Number one, they're not hard. Number two, they just take maybe a little more time. And we've got a little more time right now, so it might be a fun time to try shears. These that I'm using are all on sale. So there's not gonna be a lot of them, but you know, it's a good time to buy them and try them and see how you like them. So the first thing I'm gonna say is when you're cutting them out, we've got these scissors from Kai, and they've got a little serrated blade. And when the Kai guy first said to me, you know, do you want serrated? I said, no, why would I need serrated? And he said they grab the fabric a little bit more, and sure enough, they do. They grab the fabric a little bit more. So when you're cutting out, they're a little easier to deal with. A serrated blade, I know many of you have them because we've got that special going, and so you have them already, and they're wonderful. And in fact, since I've started using the serrated blade, I don't think I've gone back. They're just incredible. So if you're having trouble cutting out, just know that there's a serrated blade. Look for that, and I think you'll really like it. I decided to use 617. My fabric is a woven. I wanted a twist of some kind. And so 617 was the perfect blend for what I wanted. So I'm half and half. So what that means is, and I chose a pattern, first off, that's really simple. This is um, Mark's Twisted Blouse. It only has five pieces. It has my front, my front facing, my back, and my two-piece sleeve. I could go in and use any sleeve because it didn't really matter. I, I, I wanted to cuff it up. This particular fabric is really good on both sides. So I knew that rolling up the sleeves would be a perfect look that I wanted. Sheer sometimes can look really dressy, but I've got mine on with jeans and they certainly can go either way. They're just fun to dress up and they're fun to take down. All right, so that's kind of the big plan that I've got. And so what I want to show you out of that is that when you take those five pieces, obviously because of how I've done it, you'll have to cut single layer. So again, that's where the time comes in. It's going to take you a little more time. With this particular shear and with many of them, you'll see that when you put two layers like that, you see through both layers. So you've either got, to, you know, you've either got to strategically place them to where one complements the other. And I know we did a video a little while ago where we did what was called crisscross and one went this way and one went this way and they were perfectly paired to where they complemented one another. And I love that look. But in this case, that wasn't gonna work where it's just this small area. And so what you wanna do is what's called shadowing a stripe. And I don't know if that's a term that's literally out there, but I know that in the late 80s, I had a dress line and I had another designer who worked with shears all the time and she showed me how to shadow a stripe. And it's a very simple concept. I just don't know if some of you know about it. And you see it on very high-end garments. On cheaper garments, they use interfacing. But on really high-end garments, they shadow the stripe. And of course, it's because it all has to be hand-placed. But again, it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of time. So what you're gonna do is you'll notice that the front facing, and the front are duplicates of it. That's already in your pattern. And notice I didn't make any pattern changes at all. All, all it is is, is um, fabric pattern combination and pattern placement on the fabric. That's all we're dealing with here. So notice those two pieces are the same. So what I did then is I cut this piece out first. And if it's on the dotted side, you don't really need to worry about placement. When it's on the stripe side, if you'll notice the stripes go right along with the lapel, so that means this is where the stripes took place. And I lined up this line with the stripe, and then the rest of it you see just falls onto bias, and it's beautiful. It's just beautiful the way it looks. All right, so once I have cut this out, I literally took it 
and laid it on the exact same stripe, the exact same place. It's very easy to do because you've got the piece already cut out and you're gonna cut the outline, you're gonna cut all this of the facing, then take the, the fabric away because you're actually cutting off the fabric. Don't cut it off the pattern piece anymore. Once you've cut it, the first front off of the fabric, then go ahead and take it away and then lay this where you've cut and finish up cutting this side. So it will perfectly match all the way down. Cut up the right side and the right side, whichever side you're deciding to do. When you go to the polka dots, you're gonna do the exact same thing. Manipulate the fabric where those polka dots and there's a pattern to the color where you're not gonna get something like that, you're gonna get something where those polka dots are right on top of each other and perfectly. So we're gonna show you a little close-up of this lapel. This is the dotted lapel. So you can see that those dots are literally laying right on top of one another, and then so are the stripes. Okay, so again, it's very easy to do, it's beautiful, it's fun to do, and you don't get all these funky things showing through your, um, showing through your shear, and you can do a myriad of patterns, there's no limit as to what you can do. Any collar, any plaque, anything. You just have to fuss, you know, I think it's called fussy cutting, but you know, just putting one on top and laying it out for the other. So again, the only th two things I did is I cut this out already. I laid this line along the stripe because you just have to make a decision. Do I want the stripe going through the body? I wouldn't do that because the stripe is pulled in anyway once you start to do the knot. And so where your focus is is up here, which is why I decided to make this line follow the stripe. So that's just a logical choice. You could do it wrong. Probably might come out with still a beautiful blouse, just different than what I kind of anticipated. And then you're gonna take the fabric itself and lay it out on the next piece of stripe and cut just the front portion, take it away, and then finish cutting up the rest of the facing. So what you want is that front facing to match identically so that you can see as you look through it, you're seeing the exact color stripe on the exact color stripe. Remember when you're cutting out single layer to cut out one side up and then turn your pattern down and cut one side down. You know, I know that sounds crazy. Um, you'll remember that, but just don't cut two fronts. Don't cut two of them up the same way. One's gotta be cut up. It's like cutting leather and then put the other one down. Same with the sleeve. I did the same thing with the sleeve. Just make sure that you're cutting one and one. And then with the back, I'm gonna show you a picture of the back here. What I did is again, I cut half the stripe and half the circle and I just joined them. So I cut one back and then I laid it down I always use my cut piece to cut the next piece. And you're gonna find that your accuracy level goes way up when you do that. Because fabrics do have a tendency, even if you weigh them down, to just move a little bit. Just make sure it's straight, try to get a smooth, flat surface, and then use the piece you've cut once to cut the other piece. Even when I cut out the stripe first, I use that cut out front to cut the polka dot. Again, because it's going to be, um, it's just gonna be more accurate. The two sides are going to be a little more accurate than not. Again, with the two-piece sleeve, I was just gonna roll them up so you could use any of your blouse sleeves and it would work fine because you'd still have the ability to roll them up. This particular blouse has an invisible zipper in the side and so I put that in just like normal. I followed the directions exactly as the pattern suggested. I just had fun with the fabric. All right, so dive into these shears. They're beautiful. They're so much fun to do. These are, again, coordinating. The fabric numbers are 32, oh, 3032, sorry, 3032 is the polka dot and 3034 is the stripe. Um, they're on sale for $11.99 a yard. These are just fun to play with. When you're doing the stripe, you're gonna need two yards because the stripe um, takes more strategic placement, the polka dot you'll only need one yard. So you'll use probably an additional yard of the stripe because of how you're laying it out and everything has to match. Um, the, polka dot, the polka dots are much more often repeated and so the one yard will be fine with that. With the, notice with the color of the stripes, you can see that it goes like eight colors before it repeats. So that's why when you're trying to lay them perfectly on top of each other, you'll need more yardage on that. All right, so the goal is happy sewing. You all know that. Don't be afraid of shears. They're just so much fun. I use the serger on everything. So you can see that even through there, the serger's right there. 
I did line that up to where that would go on a white so you can see that that white thread would be a little easier so when I laid out my sleeve on the stripe I put the edges in white it was very easy to do not complex at all just another thing to think about so that when I use that white thread it, it wouldn't be unusual when it was rolled up and it wouldn't you know it wouldn't even really show all right so happy sewing from silhouette patterns